That is why we came back to Louisiana. <laughs> Good job. All right. Uh, well, welcome to the channel. This is uh, something definitely new. Uh, we've been kind of thinking about possibly jumping into the podcast scene for a while, and uh, this week just kind of lended itself uh, to that. Um, the fact that half of the crew is working and the other half of the crew is either about to have a kid or has just had kids uh, in the last couple of months, it kind of it was a smart decision for us not to head north this year. So right now we're in the middle of the split here in Louisiana, and um, so we wanted to still put some content out. So I called Corey McClendon was like, hey, you know, let's maybe just sit down and do a little talking. And so um, if you like this kind of stuff, we're just going to kind of hang out, talk for a little while. If you like it, uh, leave us a like, leave us a comment. Um, if this is something that uh, you like and enjoy and would watch, let us know. Uh, we definitely don't have all the equipment to be doing this uh, the best way possible. So if this is something that we want to do more in the future, we'll definitely be able to get all that equipment. Uh, but right now we're just kind of winging it. So um, yeah, we're here. That's all we know. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I that's guess that is kind of the story of yeah. story of Ducks and Co. Um, but um, yeah, from from the start, I guess when I text them this morning about um, doing this, the, the first thing right off the bat that I kind of wanted us to talk about um, that may be interesting to y'all. Um, I know for me, um, I watch a lot of YouTube, so I enjoy um, watching all kinds of different guys, um, different channels. And, and one thing to me that can, can easily get lost is kind of people's personality. Um, it's really easy to get worried about just uh, killing ducks and, and the pursuit of whatever animal it is you're chasing. So um, my hope with this first you know little bit was for us to just kind of start about or talk about the start of Ducks & Co., um, why we're doing it, uh, how it kind of came to be. Um, so, yeah, I guess we'll just dive right into that. Um, y'all want to talk about kind of y'all growing up hunting and and just how y'all always kind of wanted to film and do stuff? Yeah, I mean, so Corey and I, so Corey's the oldest out of our uh, the cousins, I think. Uh, Corey's the oldest, uh, I'm the second oldest, and Hunter, uh, many of you may not know, but Hunter is actually Corey's brother-in-law. He's got a little sister, and so that's kind of how Hunter came into the deal. But we've always been, uh, you know, hunting together. I mean, my daddy really didn't hunt. Corey's daddy always hunted, and so uh, that's kind of how I got into the hunting aspect of stuff. But uh, your daddy was always real big into photography. You know, back then, mm -hmm. uh, really wasn't a big thing to do videography and film your hunts and social media but Which, your daddy always had no, yeah, that camera. he had always had that <laughs> cell phone he still to this day takes more pictures than anybody I've ever seen when oh, on yeah. vacation yeah. he's got a million pictures yeah yeah so, he's always been good at that so i mean i think just growing from that and then you know going into what you were doing you know uh with your job and everything that just kind of uh your your passion for it was of, of course different from ours you know uh yours is more work you know you have a passion for uh making stuff uh turning bad things well <laughs> is uh horrible videos into something that's good you know that's, yeah. that's something that you're talented at and for us it was just always passionate about being able to uh get those moments you know capture those moments whether it was good moments or bad moments uh you know just being with a family you know right so for me, I guess a lot of it starts, it goes all the way back to uh, kind of my dad. And um, growing up for me, I was not a duck hunter. We did not duck hunt. We did a bunch of deer hunting. Uh, when I grew up or when I was little growing up, my dad was on a, um, a club in Mississippi and we did tons of deer hunting. And that's kind of where I fell in love with deer hunting. Um, but after that, when I got a little bit older, um, it's kind of when uh, this whole concept and idea of filming your hunts and uh, you know, for a while there, it was just like you had your, you know, you had your big name brands that were making videos yeah. and DVDs and things like that. But um, as the kind of evolution of cameras um, started, you had guys that started, you know, buying like handy cams and different things like that and filming their hunts. And that's kind of where my dad find, found himself. Um, and so for the, the beginning of, of my video, um, all started with uh, really hunting with my dad. He started filming his hunts, his deer hunts. And so that was something that I kind of got into with him. Um, and then probably, I don't know, maybe if I graduated in 2016, probably 2017, 
Yeah. Um, we really sh- kind of jumped on board uh, with that, and we're going to do um, Hunt Real, which is his still to this day his YouTube channel. And so we were going to hunt with him and film some stuff. And so me and McClendon, I think we grabbed uh, it's like my mom's little. I mean, probably $120 Rebel soccer three. mom. I don't even know that it was that good. Uh, little camera, had a little little bit of zoom, but not much. And we took out in the woods and started filming some hunts. And uh, I don't know that we ever actually filmed anything. Get killed. Yeah, we, no, I missed. Yeah, uh, you, well, you missed. I shot one that wasn't a great shot, and we recovered it. it. Yeah. yeah, recovered it the next day, and the coyotes had destroyed it. <laughs> so it was from the conception of us... And a camera, it has been chaos. That is um, where the the videos of being bad, you made good. I don't know <laughs> if I made the start. Good. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, so we started that. We started uh, with Hunt Reel and kind of doing that with my dad. And then um, after that, I guess just kind of with life getting busier, um, McClendon getting out of college, and uh, we just kind of all slowed down on the filming. Uh, dad kept kind of going with Hunt Reel. Um, but then um, I kind of got back into it. Uh, I don't know, maybe that was 2018, probably. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I started, uh, I kind of got the bug to really start pursuing photography and video. And so I Well, at um, that time you were camera. doing, I think you were doing weddings. And you kind of started doing yeah. weddings. Yeah, so, well, I, I started yeah. taking some pictures here and there, trying to really um, pursue that, uh, not knowing what it had to That and learn. I mean, you were just yeah. trying to learn. Not, not knowing really what that would have in store, but knowing that I enjoyed it and liked it and wanted to be a little bit better at it. And have better equipment and uh and from that i ended up actually getting a job at uh, duck commander uh, where we started um their youtube channel or not really started it but kind of got it going and i was able to be there for two and a half years and work with those guys and and from that that's kind of where my love of duck hunting came from because uh, like i said i had never really duck hunted i, I think i even remember um with one of my first interviews there at duck commander i was like hey you know you ain't got to worry about me wanting to shoot or anything yeah. i'm gonna be ready i'm ready to film because i don't even really care about shooting ducks and uh so i was you excited were still high and mighty on deer yeah on deer. i was excited yeah. to be able to, to duck hunt in the mornings and exactly. then be off all evening so i could go deer hunt yeah was, and uh i did not realize how t- tired i was going to be after those duck hunts yeah i did not do much deer hunting <laughs> but <laughs> field on play <laughs> yeah that's right and so through all that that's kind of where i really learned a lot about video um just in those short two and a half years and, um, and so then after that, I left Duck Commander to come here to work at the church um, and do the youth and the music. Um, and so then I guess one day we were just kind of talking. Um, I had really fallen in love with duck hunting and they had always duck hunted. Um, and so I was, I guess, kind of pursuing my own channel, doing some video, talking about video stuff um, that really wasn't great. I uh, really wasn't taking off too too well, so I was like, well, I'm going to start filming my duck hunts, you know, this year. I think it was like literally the beginning of November, and I was like, I'm going to film all my duck hunts, and so I called McClendon, and we kind of had a conversation about it because I wanted to make sure that they were okay with me doing that, filming it, and putting it on my channel, and uh, long story short, after that conversation, we decided, well, let's, you know, let's just start a start a new channel and and, uh, and start Ducks & Co., and so that was kind of the whole conception of Ducks & Co. was was based on the fact that they had always done it. I wanted to film just because that was something I had also fallen in love with um, and just the opportunity was there. We had no clue what it was going to look like or what it was going to be, um, but we knew that a lot of what we wanted to do yeah. was also just capture those memories because <clears throat> there is no telling what will happen when we all get together and get to cutting up and griping at each other and doing whatever. There's it, Chaos happens, and we knew we wanted to document that, so that was kind of where all that came from. Um, and well, then, of course, just having, you know, the whole group of cousins being involved. Well, yeah, I mean, so that's kind of where, uh, you know, your love of of duck hunting came in through a lens, right? Through a camera, I would say. And whereas ours, because, you know, you were still young and new to the, you know, uh, they always, duck, the duck men always killed a bunch of ducks. You were just capturing those moments. You didn't really pull the trigger. I think you were allowed a few times or whatever, but... You know, ours was always, we fell in love behind the gun, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And so uh, with you and with us, it just kind of meshed like that. And now uh, we do try and make it, you know, be more involved. And that's where a lot of times, you know, uh, we try and put different people behind the camera. That way, you know, you get your shots. But, uh, yeah, for sure, we always want to try and get, uh, you know, respect the the hobby i guess you know it, it, a lot of times we make it seem like it's a job 
Uh, and so, uh, which it is, you know, it, it takes, if anybody has done anything filming wise, and that's kind of one thing that I had to learn is it definitely takes more than the extra step, you know, uh, maybe two, maybe three extra steps, you know, uh, you could be walking through and on, walking to a levee and say, like, Hey, hold up, you know, wait a few minutes. Everybody else is ready to go. Um, but, uh, I think everybody here and, you know, everybody that, uh, films with us and hunts with us, I would definitely say that we've all come to love each part of it, the filming aspect of it, as well as the hunting aspect of it. Um, so. Yeah, I agree. That that was something that was cool to me is like, like you said, we grew up shooting and my dad, you know, I took pictures, yeah. but like video wasn't, when I mean, you had documentary and stuff that did, they were the OGs of it all, I guess, but like we didn't video. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's, the, at that time it was like 2000. I mean, we were five yeah. years old at 2000, you but, know. But that's the cool part, I guess, where you come in is like the whole video side of it is like thinking back at all the pictures we got, like, and trying to remember all those hunts. And with this, you could put all that together and yeah. look back at the video. And I mean, I think that was the coolest thing for me as far as us and memories and families and friends, you know, just having videos to look back and yeah. even on the not so good hunts, you know, that something stupid happens and it's funny, you know, you can look back on all that and, and remember. Yeah, that's, because that's it's not cool. always going to be, you know. We, especially here, we, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There ain't always gonna be a banger around here in Louisiana. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. So, uh, and I mean, like this year, I mean, we've killed a, a lot of teal, uh, a lot, a lot of pintail. But that's really, you know, hunters was so wanting to go up north because you know, right now there are a lot of mallards. I think you were talking to them guys uh, at Kansas. Mm -hmm. I think they were from, um, and so you know, they're doing really well with the mallards. Where mm -hmm. he, we're here. Really hadn't had a push cold front, and so I mean, we're on a, we're on a streak though. Two months <laughs> yeah. in a row, we've killed a mallard. Oh, we have, yeah, we killed a total of what five mallards? Yeah. Four, I think. Okay, we, you got a rat in your pocket? <laughs> <laughs> Weeds no. over here? <laughs> no, no, a uh, boat cannon, boat cannon. <laughs> yeah, that no, boat it's, cannon got one. Uh, it's definitely been, and I guess that's for me where the struggle comes in is, um, you know, I can get more caught up in the the film inside of it to where I want this just absolutely stunning footage that we don't get in the pit line because a lot of times in the pit line, we are killing a bunch of teal, um, you know, like you're talking about and they're, yeah. you know, hundred miles an hour. And so for me, I get caught up in the, we got, we got to get some, get on some public land with some big ducks or get in some places where some mallards are going to come so we can get that good footage. And for y'all, I think a lot of times it's like, man, what you talking about? We just killed 40. You know, well, and I think, but I, and I agree, but kind of like the conversation we had the other day too, the blind that we are in uh, on Highway 15 yeah. is definitely, you know, uh, I think it was Ryland that was asking me, or maybe Buchanan or somebody was asking about uh, that hunt that we had the other day was raining. I think yeah. it was Saturday, and you know the rain was real bad, and uh, thankfully it slacked up about eight o'clock, seven thirty, eight o'clock or whatever, and so you know we got that. I call it a quarter you know roof kind of over front you got the opening you know but you still have a little bit and so like we were saying it makes it difficult there but like Bocana's blind with the open top mm -hmm. you know it's easy to film it's shorter too wasn't it like you can stand up over yeah it, yeah you know what I mean? like yeah you can see yeah. just the roof just the roof is what makes our so the backs tall. that's what i'm right. saying the roof is really what hinders you from getting yeah. that well footage. and sitting down your head is above you know. and, and I will say too, you know, and that's what uh, one thing that duck hunters always, you know, look for is the wind, right? And so with that blind that we hunt, you know, what are the best days are always with the north wind, supposedly. That's what they say. Well, this blind that we hunt on 15 is facing northwest. So, I mean, if, the, if we get an, any sort of north, the ducks are going to be trying to come over us. And that's what makes it difficult on the, you know, the videographer, whoever's in charge of the camera that morning mostly hunter but because he gets aggravated because we can't film that well uh but yeah i mean that's what makes it difficult to film you know for that too and it's it's like i said it's hard either way i mean it's one of the toughest things to me i film turkeys ducks deer you know fishing any of that there's nothing harder than filming ducks you mm -hmm. know so when you add in those extra elements of it not being perfect it not being yeah. right you know if you can get a high wind day in a good hole where they're coming down the same trail every time they're just flying in on the same yeah um uh, you know just that same path coming in straight on forward and you're just smacking them oh it's so much easier 
But yeah. Whenever we're in that pit lane, you know, there's teal. It's like they like to come off this side, that side behind mm-hmm. us. It is. You know, and it it's just it just makes it. Sense. It is the type of duck too. I mean, mm-hmm. we could if we were shooting mallards in that pit line, like yeah. you, you know, they're slower and they're more and, consistent. Yeah. I mean, depending on the wind, but more consistent normally. Teal, you know, no telling what they're gonna do really. Well, yeah. and, but, and I mean. Honestly, and of course, I'm not one that watches YouTube very often. I mean, I know that's more of your uh, go-to deal, uh, just with ideas and being creative and stuff. But in a pit blind, you also have our flaps, mm-hmm. and you know what I mean? And so I'd almost say hunting a pit blind, you know, everybody, yeah, that's that's easy hunting, this and that. But I don't know. I think that uh, sometimes hunting pit blinds, filming at least, yeah. from a filming perspective, it makes it a whole lot more difficult than being – you know, underneath a huge oak tree mm-hmm. and ducks falling in, you know what I mean? You can kind of, as a cameraman, you can kind of hide a little bit better. The hunt may be easier in the pit blind, but filming and, and yes. all that's definitely hard. For sure. I Yeah, agree with that for sure. So, but uh, I don't know. I mean, we really don't have the push of birds that we would like. That's why I was texting somebody today, uh, telling them I'm, I wish that, or I'm hoping that uh, our split started last weekend uh today's what uh wednesday tuesday Tuesday. Uh, today's tuesday and so uh we have this weekend to wait and then so what two more weekends Mm -hmm. uh uh, two weeks and one weekend so hopefully we get some cold weather i think it's supposed to be pretty cold this morning or in the morning and it's supposed to rain saturday and then sunday is going to turn around and be a strong north wind so that'll be that'll be good and then arkansas which is just north of us you know they'll open up yeah so that all open up saturday that ought to push for us but yeah and i mean and just that rain is going to be the biggest thing you that's know, what i was saying water. we're we're you know uh a lot of guys local guys from northeast louisiana has been doing you know duck reports and this and that and that's what they're saying yeah. you know if you got water you got ducks but my, you Maybe know kind too. of kind of like we were experiencing uh me hunter and logan went uh when was it one day last week it may have been a week ago from today yeah, last uh, wednesday i think maybe so and you know we literally uh, until that hunt, we're killing 18 birds mm-hmm. a morning. Mm-hmm. And that we went on that hunt and literally shot three specks is all we shot. So yeah. uh, the water, we got the water, but it's like we have local birds. And so mm-hmm. we just shot them out. Well, they're all, they're all sitting in the same couple of places because it's the only places that have water. Yeah. That's Everybody's right. shooting them out, which is pushing them away. Yeah. You know, so it's just part of it, I guess. Um, but that's why, you know, we do need that push to bring more birds uh, further south and yeah. hopefully some mallards along with it because we can pick about shooting mallards. I really hadn't seen very many people kill mallards. No, that's been pretty far and few between. But a lot of that too is, I mean, you got certain farms, but like, I mean, like yeah. Maddie and all them, you know, on 15, you know, they're hunting majority of these blinds every day. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's yeah. not a lot of water. Like, normally, if the river's up, you know, and then some of these public lands, you got more water for these birds to rest, and they don't really have that right now. So, they're no. not, you know, they're constantly getting shot at. But um, they still, you know, they still done well. Right, no, no, they do good. Around, I think, you know? and they probably bounce blind. I don't really know how they do what they do, but, I mean, they, they stay consistent. But as far as, like, a public land deal, too, like, oh, we yeah. don't have the water, so all yeah. these holes are getting shot, like, exactly. every day. Yeah. They don't, there's nowhere for these birds to rest, but, but we got rain, the river's rising, so, I mean, maybe we can continue to get rain and things turn around for the second split, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I know the other day, it was funny to me, uh, we did hunt some public land um, around here the other day, and it was funny to me, because you had left, but, like, for the first little while, every duck that come over was, like, skirting. All of the water. Really? Get away from the water. Yeah. Flying right by. Well, Never I mean, even looking. That's kind of, and that's what, uh, that body of water that, you know, at one time was private. Like we were talking about, we grew up uh, there at Sand Lake. Um, you know, when we were talking, telling you the other morning, I mean, you'd sit there and it'd be nothing to walk through and just hear wood ducks everywhere. And that's what me and Corey kind of, you know, laughed. But at the same time, it was a sad ordeal because we may have seen I don't know eight wood ducks may have heard two or three and that's mm-hmm. just uncalled for from when we were young and used to go there man that was the best time you know one of our videos last year we were talking about you know the wood duck shoot here it is no I mean there wasn't even a wood duck shoot that day you know what I mean and as right. a kid you you always knew that you were gonna have a wood duck shoot when you went to that lease you know yeah. when you went to that uh 
that's what I was telling telling them was was with too is it's just different. Like the birds, you know, be, oh. between it being private and public now, yeah, they used, you know, there's not much food there, so it's like it was a resting area then, and food was close. exactly, and, but, and you know, we pull that up too the because they don't farm it anymore. Right, you know, right. back in the day, they used to farm the mollusk. But yeah, so I mean, we pull up. You know, that's what I was telling y'all. Or I mean, I guess you was there at that point. But you know, you pull up and you could hear all the ducks out there. Yeah. You knew, you might not. You know, you'd always shoot wood ducks or whatever, a few off ducks early. But like nine, ten o'clock, it all the birds that were roosted in there left to go eat, they'd come back to rest. I mean, you, you know, good sunny day with some wind, oh, it was, it was gonna kill them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was just money. But they don't, they can't rest in there like they do now. So I mean, you know, it's just a whole different, different ball game. The boys are killing them. And, little bitty spots that we never even had to hunt you know yeah just, and i mean nothing's wrong with killing the birds of you know we're all there to get our limit and this, this and that but to me i think what affects the area and i try you know was talking to y'all earlier in the uh, year about this is is trying to be respectful of one another and when hunting public and trying to be respectful of the game you know if if you're sitting there upset with the other group of hunters next to you you know, there's really no sense in trying to, you know, of course, everybody wants to get their limit. I understand that. But uh, the whole sky busting thing, you know, to me, that just does nothing but hurt your own group, the other group, as well as, you know, refuge. the refuge as a whole. You mm -hmm. know, because like you're saying, now those birds, and of course, it's just because there was no water and shot up. But now them birds are like skirt, you know, going mm -hmm. around the water. It's like, oh, no, we don't even get shot at too many times over that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... For sure, but it definitely and now all that definitely plays a, a huge role in it. But that's that's some of that getting a new push of birds too. It like, is no totally. Once these birds totally. have been here for however long it's been, it ain't probably been two weeks, I guess. And these birds are already they know where to go and where not to go. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that's shot at private and public the same. Yeah, yeah they, it don't take long, and they're they're educated. So that's yeah. not for sure. And that's what which comes to help. You know, I was telling Will the other day, and that's what. Uh, you know, a lot of the pintail we were shooting were juvenile pintails. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there was one mm -hmm. bull that we shot, you know, that actually had a few sprigs on it. And yeah. so it was definitely has been a rough year. Um, well, you got to think already by the time those birds get from up north all the way to us. Yeah. Man, them things, they've probably been shot at multiple times already. <laughs> so it, it doesn't long. take but one shot and they're like, not there again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. No. So it, it, it's definitely a, a struggle. And that's where I guess it's one of those things where you do. It's like, you know, let's respect each other. Yeah. Hey, you, you beat me to wherever it was. I'm going to let you have it. I'm not going to hunt right on you. I'm not going, you know, um, you start calling and I'm going to start acting a fool over there because I know you're calling it some birds. Or, that only hurts. That. Yeah. yeah that only it only hurts, hurts the whole place as, you know, as a whole. So, yeah. um, but they get, they get mad at me because I'm, <laughs> I start getting hardcore about going public land, trying to find the mallards, but I get to listen to all their stories about when all that public was private and how they used to smash them all the time. And here I am, ain't shot nothing but teal in the pit line. I'm like, we got to go. We got to go. What are we doing? I, I thought you were about to say that uh, you put down that camera and get off that call, that singleton call, hunter over there, That's right. barking at them. I'm like, That's right. oh, we're trying, you know. Tell Hunter quiet down and he McClendon, just still McClendon, hollering. McClendon likes to talk sweet to him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't what's, like, what's your illustration? My illustration is I like when my wife talks sweet to me or my wife, <laughs> you know, I don't like when she's barking at me. Yeah, you come in the house, she starts hollering at you. What you doing? You I turn around. Back out. <laughs> you know, she started talking sweet to you. You coming on in. Yeah. yeah you coming in and right. probably cooking supper that night. That's right. I don't know about that. But, but, um, but yeah, it's definitely, it's been a, it's been an interesting year so far. I think, you know, that's what I was telling them about. It's almost, it's almost like collectively everybody I feel like has struggled. Um, everybody we talked to, but not only that, but just watching YouTube, there's not really been a whole lot of guys you know, around the South that have really done well that have in previous years. And so hopefully it'll, with all the rain we're getting, hopefully everything will pick up for everybody and we'll be able to yeah. maybe slip up North a little bit, not too far, but do some hunting and, and, uh, hopefully kill some birds by the time it's all said and done. Which it is, you know, it is the close of uh, waterfowl, you know, of course, or uh, ducks and specks and stuff, but we do have uh, snows and, you know, mm -hmm. conservation. Yeah, we got the conservation this week. Hopefully, so. we, can, hopefully we can get on one of those. It'd be, be a good time. I know I enjoyed. That was the first time last year whenever we did that hunt. That was the first time I'd ever done that. 
Oh yeah, me too. And that was I don't know what we've that was crazy. Them in high school, you know, pop yeah. out of a ditch or something. Yeah. But I've never yeah. actually set up and called and done that either. But that was crazy. No, that was something. Uh, oh, that was a great memory too. I mean, I don't know if it was. I know it was awesome and it was a fun hunt, but I know we were all delirious off that. I don't even remember how many hours it was. Chaston said we had slept. He he like counted it up. Oh, that, that was whole like month? yeah, it was like seven. It was like seven hours over like seventy two. Well, y'all, hours I don't know, mine like and that. Elijah's was different than yours, Jake's. And yeah, because y'all had been going. Y'all had been driving before. And that. we were staying. Yeah, y'all, y'all drove up that whole. Yeah, we drove evening. up. Yeah, because I think we left here at like. Y'all left eight, for church. Seven thirty, eight yeah. o'clock. Yeah, and drove all easy. the way up there and got there at three o'clock. Woke well, y'all, y'all didn't up. even. No, no, no. I was about to say, y'all didn't even go to sleep. No, we got to, we got to where we were staying, woke yeah. y'all up, and went straight to the hole. Like, <laughs> didn't sleep at all. No, not at all. Got out there, hunted, went back, took a nap. And then went and hunted that Went evening. and hunted that evening, and then got back. Slept then. Cook, I think we like cooked ducks or something that night, so we didn't really go to bed early or nothing. Went to sleep, got up at 3 o'clock again, and went to another How many ducks spot. did we kill on that trip? 20? Oof. I don't think if that, that I think funny. we killed like six the first morning, and then the first morning was the best morning. Yeah, we just killed a bunch of gadwall. I think we killed six or seven gadwall that first morning, and then the second morning we killed. We we'll had to go back. And we killed like a mallard hen. We killed a few, like two or three teal. Was it teal or I don't know what kind of ducks that was. And then yeah, I'm not sure. We probably, I mean, we honestly probably killed fifteen, maybe if that. It was it was definitely a rough rough trip. I think that's why McClendon didn't want to go with me this time. No, it's not that at all. The and you think I'm like lazy or don't want to do it. It's our preparation is not there. Like it's one of them deals where hey let's let's go. We're very you're very like sporadic. Um, hey let's I got a few days let's go. Well. We, yes, we did have a place we could have stayed, and yes, we did have some people that were willing to help us find some birds or get on some birds, you know, and I, they had a successful hunt, I think, yesterday mm-hmm. morning. But it's just on our part, it the preparation lacks. Well, it's just hard to get up and go. It's it's hard to get up and go when you have well, multiple people. Well, what I'm saying is is you got to be very, you know, uh, those northern Midwest states are very particular in their units and in their uh, groupings of, you know, throughout a, a, res- a refuge or whatever. And so I guess it's, it's, hard, it's hard for me to justify when we don't put enough time in studying the land and studying. And especially like, and you thought I was crazy for listening to somebody that said it was dry or whatever. But, I mean, they did just come back from that area. You know, now, now, granted, they weren't duck, duck hunting, they were deer hunting, but still, you know, it's easier for me to sit there and say, well, if it's dry here, it may also be dry there. But I understand we're, you know, eight yeah. hours, ten hours away from that. Well, and realistically, it all come down to we just didn't have, I mean, it would have probably, at the max, would have been just us for three. Just me and Yeah. Well, yeah, well, well Corey already Corey, if, if he, you know, decided to go. But like I said, max us three, probably just me and you, which wasn't. Isn't isn't worth the trip. So that's it would have been good if I mean I could have only went like a day or two. Right. But like having people that for what it was worth, if we could have rolled in there, hunted with them and then scouted that's my thing, is not you know, we don't them guys, I mean, we've never met them. I right. mean we could have went and killed them. I mean that I'm not denying that's that. That's what but I'm like, saying. I'm big on like putting my eyes on stuff. For sure. You know, we can look at sure. it on the map all day, but it's just yeah, that's why it's hard well, for me to just wing it and go. Yeah. But the more we do this and make you know friends with all these people, you know, we'll. We well, that's why. To, that's know? why, really, I guess last year we didn't really give ourselves enough time. We, I think, we had our literally. We were only. I mean, there. y'all were there early. We did. We gave ourselves enough time. We didn't give ourselves enough plan. I mean, we yeah, had choices. We yeah, had places. Well, we were stuck. We stuck ourselves to one refuge, and that's right. It just wasn't the best place. And for that us refuge to hunt. was not as many acres. And you got to understand, that's one thing that I looked at, I was looking at too, about that refuge that we were going to go up there north this year, uh, this week, is the refuge that is here in northeast Louisiana, you know it is, and it may have just been in one area that I clicked on, it is 20,000 acres. The one that I think I clicked on the other day was literally like 
one section of it was like 5,000 acres. Yeah. And so, like, that's another thing is, like, I'm sitting there trying to wrap my mind on, you know, we think the refuge here is gets tight and, you know, it's crowded and too many people. But I'm thinking to myself, do I really want to drive 10 hours for, you know, 5,000 acres of land? Or, yeah. You know what I mean? I understand it's probably more than that and you have more choices. Uh, and, of course, I mean, my numbers may be off on that. But still, it's hard to justify driving and yeah. putting that gas mileage and putting that money down. Well, that's why it's good, I think. And I guess that was kind of my thing last year. And, you know, for any of us, like, to just start and to go, you may have a couple of years of not great, but trying to figure out a place. Well, Corey can testify yeah. to this because, I mean, you hunt public land in the northern states and Midwest, mm -hmm. Midwest more well, than I mean, any of us. That's what I was about to say. Is, I mean, you got to look at it like, yeah, y'all didn't go and like kill a bunch of ducks. But I mean, you had off weather, this and that. But what you got to look at is like, y'all learn the place. Y'all know where you can and can't hunt. For so sure. like next year, we get some good weather and like, you know, context mm -hmm. we make up there and we like, hey, there's birds here. Y'all yeah. already know where to go. So right. I mean, same with my hunt stuff. Like yeah. I've ate my fair share of tags, but a lot of that is, you know, is why I keep going back because it's like, you know, I spent that year and I didn't kill nothing, but I learned this this and this and i can use that to you know what i mean yeah you're not yeah. always going to kill them i mean that's with anything well that's but. just the mindset that you, you that's the understanding that you have to have within yourself right, right. yeah you ain't going to kill them every time yeah and, and that's, that's that's am i really there anywhere. Money that, yeah you know so that's i mean really that's but that's the public that's what i love about public land and even that you know like y'all go and you learn what you learn and if you go back and can use that and be successful then like that's just that does something to me you know yeah like sure. you you put that well it's more rewarding right. definitely and i think that's the thing that people always you know give about uh being in a pit blind is oh that's a rich man's you know hobby that's a rich man's uh place of to hunt is because you know yeah there still is work that has to be done but you know it's yeah. not as yeah. to some people not as rewarding yeah, you know what i mean sure. and i think that for sure that's kind of the mindset that we have at times, you know, it's like, okay, we need to get out and about rather than, and I mean, the viewers is too, you know, they don't want to sit there and watch that, put the yeah. pit blind every hunt. Yeah. Uh, we got to get out and about. And well, I'm fine with doing that. Yeah. Well, and my thing too is, you know, it goes back to me. I have, I've done a lot of the pit blind hunting with y'all. What I haven't done is really kill some mallards. Whether you that's really haven't killed, but you have seen do yeah. your past experience. And so it, it yeah. that's what fires me up. It's like, Shooting these teal, great. I love it. It's fun. I enjoy being on everybody. But man, all I can think about in the back of my mind is some mallards coming in. You yeah. know, not even a huge group, but just a group six, seven, eight mallards coming what in. I say, and doing it what did I say the other Woo! day? Like, like a dove, dove from heaven. <laughs> yeah. 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 Shit, dove down. from heaven falls. Straight that way we so. can shoot about six times and hit him on that seventh. <laughs> yeah, I must say like 26 times. Somebody, that's what somebody texted me today or I was on the phone with somebody and they were like, man, I really enjoy these videos y'all been doing. Uh, you know, show, send it to my daddy and really he enjoyed it, this and that. And I kind of started laughing. I said, yeah, what did he, what'd he say? The boys can't shoot. <laughs> he started laughing. He said, no, no, he didn't say anything like that. Like, well, it is a different, it is a different type of shooting too in the pit line versus in, you know, public land in the woods or whatever. Anyways, um, I mean, I guess we can kind of wrap things up a little bit. Um, what's our plan for the second split, I guess? Hoping we get some rain and some water. What's y'all's thoughts on, on what's what's to come? I mean, yeah. I mean, we definitely have to get the water. Yeah. I don't know if, I don't know if they're going to start pumping some of these places up. Uh, we are, you know, uh, matter of fact, we did start pumping up another field today. Uh, I don't know if that's going to help. I know y'all seen a few birds. Uh, mm -hmm. it may, but again, really depends, depends on the water. I mean, if nobody, nowhere has water public land wise, I mean, honestly, it's going to be back to the same deal. Yeah. My prediction, and I could be wrong, but with us being closed where we are, we finally got some rain, like, what, the last weekend of this split. We got that rain. It was a pretty, I mean, it was a decent rain. What we got would you say? We may have got five inches since the closing, since, so Maybe. it rained, it rained when we, uh, Saturday, when we just got through. Is that the one you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we hunted. We hunted. That was probably, we may have got two inches there. Yeah. And then the times before, I mean, we may have gotten five inches within what? 
uh, almost a month. Yeah, which is horrible. Right, but that's what I was getting at. Is like with all that, our our split ended. We finally getting rain. We got more rain in the forecast. Not a lot, but we got some. Arkansas opening up, us finally getting a little bit of weather. I feel like it might not last, but I feel like the start of the second split will, will be good for at least a lot of people. I mean, hopefully it'll be us too. But Well, like you say, and that's what the good thing is, is Arkansas starting back up this weekend, giving those birds uh, able to push south and, mm-hmm. you know, find them holes to rest. And we may be able to, you know, start out grinding and try and get some on public. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would definitely say so. I would say that have, would need to be the plan, just because. Are we trying? Mm-hmm. To, I mean, are we going to try to hunt a little bit in Arkansas? I would say so. Well, I was about to say we may go on that one trip. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. And then also, um, Logan said something to me about us doing a little gap little shoot with him. So hopefully that'll okay pan out. So we got some stuff. We're gonna have a good second split. I, I, that's what I think. I, I I think it was you. I told early in the season. I said I really do feel like the first part of our season was was slow slower than last year yeah but the back end is going to be really good so that's that's kind of hoping i think that goes a lot what you're saying with the water you know when the water gets here things are going to get good things are going to turn up um so i mean it's i think we're predicted to have a pretty cold winter so hopefully things will turn around and it'll get cold and we'll get that rain get the water and yeah and everything will turn around so um it's definitely i mean that's part of the part of the grind, I guess, is just figuring it out, is. figuring out where to hunt, how to hunt, and, and if we do need to make those strides to go north, we just well, I like to, to talk, like I told the guys the other day too. You know, we don't do it, and we don't do ducks and coat. We don't film just for the kills. Yeah. You know, we do it for uh, the camaraderie, have being able to just sit in a barn, have a com- conversation. What have pronounced that right? No, all I can think about is that. TK Mike video that uh, what? did y'all see that one uh-huh. dad sent the other day uh-huh. anyway he was clowning on your dad about uh, <laughs> yeah, about the thing you and then he's like he just talking it. about uh, come on we're here for a good time come out here and he's like what are they teaching y'all that crap? Like, oh, with that kid? And he's like, y'all oh, yeah, do that at the bowling alley. He's like, we're here to kill. <laughs> we're here to kill something, boy. That's what yeah, I, I did watch that. But, well, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, yeah. that's yeah. funny. Well, and that's what I think it goes back to the whole point is. And I guess that's where even whether it's private land or public land, I do think when we start losing the fun of the hunt, we've lost it all. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, you know, think, talking back about respecting the public land, respecting the other people around you, like, a lot of that comes from that I have to get mine and I don't care about anybody else. I'm going to do whatever I can to get mine because my only goal is to walk out of here with a limit. Like well, if that's, that's, the if that's your, we live in. Yeah, too, if that's right? your mindset, you've yeah. missed it. Like yeah. the whole point, yeah. and that goes to the whole reason we started filming and doing things is because we enjoy doing it. We enjoy each other and cutting yeah. up and giving each other a hard time. And you know, picking on each Loving other on and one playing. another, it may, yeah. be, uh, it may be tough love, yeah, you know? that's right. And that's what's what really makes a difference. And that's what you know, we not we not, may not always be able to take a kid or take somebody that's just getting into hunting, duck hunting, or whatever it is, and they kill a limit and have this amazing yeah. hunt. But we can go and have a good time to where it encourages them to want to hate. Well, we just may get not them outdoors, them. yeah, yeah. But, I mean, but there's I so many blast. people, yeah, there's so many people nowadays that, uh. Kid wise, you know, that is too busy staying indoors and don't even like getting out, you know, out yeah. and about. And so I think that's another reason that I enjoy filming, you know, the boys, filming our kids, is that way they can, you know, mm-hmm. look back. And, you know, even though this, these videos may be garbage to them and they think we're not cool and, you know, <laughs> this and that, but they still have that memory and have that, that video to look back on, yeah. you know. Yeah, definitely uh, so. That's just something I just thought about, too, is like you was talking about the respecting everybody and as far as, like, especially the public land. And you don't see as, I mean, you still see that. You run into some cool people out there. But I, I always think back, like, Connor. I mean, we went to, you know, different high schools and stuff, but I don't even know if y'all knew that. But, like, that's where I really met Connor was hunting public land. Oh, like, really? That's, that's how we, our friendship started was huh. at the gate, you know, waiting yeah. on going public land. And then, I thought it was when y'all, work, when y'all were working together. No, that was all. This was in high school. That's where I met Connor was when we were hunting. Public land, and you know, oh, I didn't know. I that. guess he thought I was cool, so you know, <laughs> yeah, he stuck around. And, uh, yeah, but uh, but you know, I've made some really good friends on public land, and you know, and it's not like we don't run into cool people when we hunt. 
But I thought about that, like the, some people that we have run into, and granted, we got a bigger group now, but you know, they're like, ah, uh, we'd rather not hunt we all. This oh, and yeah. And, yeah. And used to, it was like, oh, yeah, you know, we got room, come on. And that still happens. But I guess all that to say is like the whole respect thing, you know. I've, well, that's one thing, though, like about Dr. Duck, too, is, you know, he yeah. always goes to that mm-hmm. public land. And, you know, people see him and it's like, oh, yeah, you're more than welcome to hunt, you know. And yeah. so that's just a cool. And, you know, he brings them in to that video. He don't care. Who, you know, again, his, I think, probably philosophy is the same as ours or whatever. It's just being in the outdoors and having the opportunity to even go, you yeah. know, because there's several people that uh, don't even have the opportunity to get to a pit blind, to get out mm-hmm. in the waters and public, you know, because when it comes to duck hunting, it is a very uh, gruesome and tiring, you know, mm-hmm. uh, especially public land. hobby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's expensive. Yeah, and so uh, I don't know the whole the whole aspect of duck hunting is enjoyable uh, and just being able to film it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's for me what I guess why it makes such a big difference to me too is because I am a social person. I like to be around. I like to hang out, and so for me growing up deer hunting, I always loved deer hunting. But I hated the whole being alone Shut in up. the woods, yeah. don't mm-hmm. talk, just sit there yeah. and be quiet for hours at a time. You know, you, you do it because that's what has to be done. Yeah. But for me, that being able to cut up, talk in between, you know, volleys of ducks yeah. or whatever is, is what makes it, you know, so enjoyable. Mm-hmm. You know, especially I think about, you know, like two years ago, I think that season we had was, was horrible. I mean, I don't think we probably killed 30 ducks all year. No. And, uh, yeah, was but it was being able to be in the blind, being able to cut up. I think that's when we really started like trying to bring breakfast every time because we, <laughs> we knew we knew it wasn't going to be good, so we had to have had to have a good breakfast. So our um, cook wasn't very well neither. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We still audition and cook, so if anybody knows it. Yeah, cook. we need it, yeah. But anyways, that's kind of for me. I guess where a lot of the joy in it comes is not always killing the ducks. One because I haven't done that a whole lot, but more on the end of. Let's just have a good time, man. Let's cut up. Let's mm-hmm. let's yeah. walk out of here. Whether we walk out, you know, with a, a heavy straps of ducks or not, we had a good time. We had yeah. a blast, and, and there's something we could tell about. There's some kind of story. There's something that happened, um, you know. So I told Logan that just about the rainy day, which I know we didn't film as much because it was a wash. Yeah. But for whatever reason, that day we didn't kill any big ducks. It was just a two shoot. But I had a blast. Mm, me too. I, I did that too. That was the funnest hunt. Like you know, just enjoyable. Which, I mean, granted, Bo Cannon had breakfast for us, you know, when we uh, that boy came in it was, it was nice, but I thoroughly enjoyed that hunt. I mean, it was, yeah. just, it was a fun time. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, just being able to be be out there, even though it was raining. Boy, I don't know about y'all, but that ride down there, me and Logan was on that rig. Well, y'all didn't have winch you. So that that uh water resistant <laughs> sicker jacket boy, it was, it he was soaked by the time it was all done. And then you and Logan showed up with like mud on your face, <laughs> like smiling. Because the whole morning, you know, y'all, y'all sat in the blind with me, and I was like, "Where did y'all get mud on y'all's face at?" And then I didn't think about it, but it was from the ride. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, windshield. It was so, always funny. It was rough, but we made it. We made it. The ride back definitely wasn't as bad as the ride down there in the rain. Yeah. So, yeah. Was, yeah. That was definitely more enjoyable. I am glad we went though. So that was one yeah. of the one of the one of the funner hunts I've been on. Yeah, it was fun. Too, I enjoyed so, it. Even shooting teal, which I mean, gosh, we shot them off the end of our barrels. Oh yeah, we. It, it definitely would have been a great video. It just happened to be pouring down rain, and we were all. I don't know. Wet. You probably would have still griped, huh? <laughs> He'd still be mad about them teal. He was proud of that phone footage yeah, I got. Yeah, sure. yeah. I don't know. I was pretty excited about it. <laughs> so I just got to pull out the gun and let y'all remember how good of a shot I was. Yeah, yeah. 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 Good thing you're on that end. <laughs> but, well, I mean, anything else y'all can think to talk about? The first one. Catch no. On the next one. Oh. Uh, just let us know. You know. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely uh, not our normal thing, and we'll try to kind of scatter these in um, throughout the year, I guess. Um, let us <laughs> this know. May like be a, <laughs> this may be about like my calling in that, that video that boy yeah. said, told me to shut up with yeah. that call now. <laughs> yeah, y'all need, y'all need to if we need to cut it out, y'all be sure to let us yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, sure, for sure. <laughs> um, but like I said, if, if you do like this kind of stuff, if you like just kind of being able to hang out with us and listen to us talk and listen to us rant at each other, um, let us know. Leave us a comment down below. Um, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we are on our way to 5,000 subscribers is my kind of hope now uh, since we kind of passed that threshold of 1,000. Um, so if you haven't yet, subscribe. Uh, do all the things, like and all that. And uh, 
Yeah, I guess we'll roll out and hopefully by the time the second split comes back in, uh, we'll be killing some ducks. So Yeah, may may have crow shoot to go do. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> 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 yeah.